they all consume um, leaf material. You see that one consumes leaf whole, while another mines the tissue within the leaf, and yet another uh, induces the plant to make galls. Uh, regardless of the need, insects across the board use their senses of taste and smell, also known as chemosensation, um, to interact with their environment. For plant feeding insects, um, since their life histories are so uh, intertwined with their host plant environment, they're um, completely dependent on the host for everything, which is why I am focusing on host use. Um, the main, the overall theme of my dissertation is to understand how variation in uh, niche influences insect chemoreceptor gene families. Um, I'm interested in the genetic mechanisms underlying adaptation to heterogeneous, homogeneous, and novel host environments. Um, and I think this will help get at uh, the extent of biodiversity we see in plant feeding insects and why we see so much phenotypic variation. Um, to answer this question, however, um, this will require comparisons between taxa, which I think can be addressed at two different levels. Um, the first is at a broad taxonomic scale, where um, this can include uh, ecological compar comparisons like competition or predation, but here I'm interested in uh, feeding guilds, which are groups of species that exploit the same resource, but not necessarily are part of the same niche. Um, this picture is an example of a group of insect nectivores, and since they all have this resource in common, I could just compare them across the board and see if there are any patterns in their chemosensory genes, which is what I try to do here. Um, I'll walk you through this very busy slide. Um, what, I, what you're looking at is a collection of nine taxa for which I collected chemo, uh, sensory, and ecological information. I'm focusing on the olfactory and gustatory receptors because those are the best study. Um, and these bars here represent the types of genes within each gene family. Blue and green represent the number of intact genes, which are annotations that appear to be complete and fully functional. Um, red and yellow are bars for pseudogenized genes, which are annotations with confirmed um, stop codons deletions, etc., and may be indicative of um, species-specific or niche-specific um, adaptations. I try to convey the ecological information with these figures. Um, I considered the diet, the diversity of diet, and the sociality of each taxa. Anyways, going back to insect nectivores, um, if we were to compare this group here of nectivores, you see that although they have this resource in common, there isn't really any patterns in the size of their gene families, the um, proportion of gustatory olfactory receptors, or the proportion of um, pseudogenized genes. And this same lack of pattern is also seen if you compare these insect um, herbivores. So it's possible that chemosensory genes are really sensitive to niche and are really labile, such that comparisons between relatively diverse taxa aren't going to be very helpful. In which case, it may be better to compare taxa that are closely related and in the same feeding niche, which is my second level of comparison. Um, going back to this example of insect ectomores, I could compare just the lepidopteran uh, ectomores, the hymenopteran ectomores, or even go so far as to only compare the hymenopteran ectomores. Um, regardless, what I expect to find in this narrow scale comparison is that the more specialized the species, the smaller the chemosensory gene families are for. And this prediction is based on research in the Dasalpa Shalia system, which is a narrow scale comparison that's probably um, the most well studied to date. Um, so Shalia is a close relative of Melanogaster that um, specialized on this one type of toxic fruit. And a series of studies have shown that relative to Melanogaster, uh, so Shelly and chemoreceptor genes have undergone increased um, gene loss and pseudogenization. And since the ancestral state is being a generalist to that hates this group, it seems possible that specialization in this case is associated with a smaller, less diverse gene family. 
Um, however, there are at least two caveats. This is from the first is that Seychellia is an island endemic, so we don't know if these patterns are due to um, selection or a bottleneck. And the second caveat is that uh, Drosophila flies are not true insect herbivores, so we don't know for sure if these conclusions actually apply outside of the system. To address these caveats, I um, would like to approach this question with the Lepontii clade of the interbreed sawflies. Um, these are a great system for evolutionary studies because we have a number of um, life history information and we can take advantage of their monophyly for a number of narrow scale comparisons. Um, the Lepontii clade is a group of about 20 um, herbivorous hymenoptera found across the eastern North America. They are pine. Uh, Pine. Their host is on pine trees and they use pine for um, everything from like a larval food source to where mating and overpositioning occur. Um, Sawflies are also known as the Symphyta, which is the other uh, suborder within the Hymenoptera. Um, the more famous ant these wasps are all part of the Apocrita. But within the Symphyta, um, so the indifferent sawflies are within the Tetranoidae. And the Lacontii clade is a um, monophyletic group within the Neodermian genus. Um, so what you're looking at here is a mixed use phylogeny um, for their dynamic advisor. Um, over here lists the uh, different Neodermian species. And I apologize for the small text, but here are the names of native North American eastern pines. And the black boxes indicate which uh, pines each sawfly uses. And so you can see that there's a lot of host use uh, diversity. Um, as I implied earlier, uh, most of the research in Hymenoptera has been on ants, bees, and wasps. So having additional data from the other <coughs> suborder of, of Symphitis would be helpful for Hymenoptera research. Also, um, sawflies are true herbivores that, that consume plant tissue. And finally, I would like to draw your attention to the number of host generous specialist uh, pairs within this group. Um, these are perfect for studying the impact of host use on human sensory evolution. Um, and since they're all closely related to each other, I can compare them and from the phenotypic to the genetic level and look for similarities in or any repeated patterns that occur. Which is what I would like to do with this specific group. Um, the Adipria lacontii, or the red-headed pine sawfly, is a generalist that feeds on over 14 different pine species. Um, its sister species, Neodibrium hymenum, is it's found exactly one um, species, incidentally a host that uh, Lacante does not use. These guys diverged about 9 million years ago and have overlapping geographic ranges. Um, so going with the um, research of Seychellia, what I would expect to find is that with the specialist Pinetum would have a smaller chemoreceptor gene family and more gene loss relative to the generalist uh, Lacantii. Uh, to test this prediction, I, will, I would need um, high quality genome assemblies for both species from which I can get um, decent genome annotations. And I have this, I have this data for the generalist uh, red-headed soft fly. Um, for those of you who care, I have listed the assemblies to that just to demonstrate that I have an assembly that's um, suitable for gene annotation. And so what I did to get my chemoreceptor genes was manual annotation, where I did iterative T-blast end searches, um, starting with genes from other hymenoptera, and kept doing iterative searches until I couldn't find any more genes. And so I found um, about 55 olfactory, scene, olfactory receptor genes and 40 gustatory receptor genes um, in the red-headed pine cell fly. Uh, this is consistent with um, what was found in the wheat stem cell fly, which is the only other symphyton that has manually curated chemoreceptor data. And um, this makes sense because they both share similar ecological niches. So the next few slides are just um, some highlights from a preliminary phylogeny I made with um, the Lacantii chemoreceptor genes and um, genes from these other uh, Hymenoptera and Melanogaster. Um, so based on homology, it appears that Lacantii does, have seem, does seem to have the conventional like sugar and bitter receptors found in other insects. 
But interestingly, um, it provides further evidence for the loss of the conventional carbon dioxide receptor in the apocrine ant species and wasps. Um, this gene hasn't been found in those groups, but was found in the wheat stem and now the redhead pine saw fly. Um, bees are known to detect CO2, so it's possible that they just have a different receptor or a different mechanism, but either way, this nicely illustrates how we can use some fighting data to date apocrine in evolution. Um, and then uh, with the data from the red-headed and wheat stem sawfly, um, there's evidence of sawfly-specific gene expansions and possibly evidence of a uh, Lacantii-specific gene expansions. However, it's really important to note that um, the, da the chemoreceptor data from the wheat stem sawfly is from a transcriptome as opposed to a full genome assembly, and so maybe missing annotations. So the takeaway from those last few slides was that um, I think it's safe to say that I have a fairly complete annotation data set for um, Lacantii, the generalist. Um, this data set already is providing some interesting information about hymenopteran evolution. And then lastly, I just want to point out that um, it's really important to have functional validation. Um, this is true for chemo receptor, chemo sensory studies in general, but in my case, I want to um, verify any uh, putative host-specific genes. Um, and then the overall summary is um, that I'm interested in specialization and how it impacts um, insect chemo chemosensory gene families. Um, I think this might help get at the origins of biodiversity in plant feeding insects. Um, I am focusing on host genes, and I am doing so with a pair of general specialist sister taxa from the Neodiprion Lacantii clade of sawflies. Um, and I am in the process of doing a gene family comparison. I have the genomic data from the generalist Lacantii, which is already providing some interesting data. And uh, my plan is to use that as a reference point for which I will compare the gene annotations from Canada. And with that, I want to draw your attention to other talks that are going on about this system, and I am happy to take any questions. We have time for questions. Like, I just a function that I don't know about because most of this research has been done in like the apocrines. 